Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to return to Chrome OS Flex. This is a new version of the Chrome operating system used on Google Chromebooks that can be installed on most desktop PCs and laptops. In particular, Chrome OS Flex is fast and secure and can be used to bring new life to older hardware. Chrome OS Flex is designed for web browsing and for running online applications like Google Docs. However, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to install standard Linux applications. And after that I'm going to reflect on my experience running Chrome OS Flex every day for four months. Right, here we are booting into Chrome OS Flex and I'll just enter my password. And here we are on the desktop. I explained how to get Chrome OS Flex in my last video, but basically you need to go to the Chrome Web Store, add the Chromebook Recovery Utility and run it to make a bootable USB drive that can be used to install the operating system on most computers. Note that since I made my last video, Chrome OS Flex has come out of beta, but my install instructions still work just fine. Anyway, back here on a live system, a launcher provides access to applications, most of which run from the cloud. But on most systems, it's also possible to use standard local Linux applications by installing a virtual machine. To check if your computer supports this, you need to go to Settings, and across here on the left, if we scroll down, you go to Advanced, and if you find down here an option for Developers with a Turn On button next to Linux Development Environment, you can install a Linux virtual machine. This should be the case, you should find this button on most systems, but if we go across to Chrome OS Flex running on my old single core netbook, we can see that under Advanced, the developer option does not exist. Another way to check is to open the application launcher and if there's a terminal icon available, a Linux virtual machine can be installed. And we don't have a terminal icon here. But if we go back to the first system, we do have a terminal icon. There it is down here. Although if we run it up, it doesn't do what you might expect because things aren't set up yet. So let's click on Setup, which just takes us straight back to Developer Settings, where we can turn on the Linux development environment. And as so often in computing, the next thing we need to do is to click on Next. On the subsequent screen, we then have to enter a username, which defaults to the Google account you're logged in with in Chrome OS Flex, but you can change it if you want, and here I'm going to change it to be EC. We also have to allocate some disk space to the virtual machine, the recommended space is 10 gigabytes. We can change this later if we wish. So here I'll go with the recommended setting and we'll click on install. And there we are. We're now installing Linux, downloading a virtual machine here in Chrome OS Flex. And as we speed on through, you may be interested to know that what we're actually installing is Debian Bullseye. And there we are. Things have finished. Let's just close down settings to be tidy and we're running here a terminal. Let's close down that as well. Always like to be neat in these videos and we'll give ourselves a bit more space on the screen. And what we've got here is a standard Linux terminal, username EC at penguin. I do like at penguin. And here we could type any standard Linux command. Let's try an lsblk, a list block devices. It works. We're running Linux. Isn't it amazing? And if you want to know how to use the Linux terminal, I've got a video all about that, which I'll link to in the video description. Anyway, what we're here to do is to install Linux applications. And before we do this, I think it's always wise to update our repositories. So we'll type a sudo apt update like that, which will just tell the machine to check it knows where all the software it might be installing actually is. Won't take long to run through. There we go. And now let's install an actual application. And I think the obvious one to do is LibreOffice. So let's do a sudo apt install LibreOffice like that. And hopefully I've got that right. It looks like I have. Do we wish to continue? Yes, we do. 
very exciting and as usual we'll speed on through and there we are it's finished and we'll now close down the terminal and when we'll do you'll see we get a little message saying leave application changes may not be saved because what we're actually doing here is not just closing down the terminal but closing down the virtual machine so it checks we really want to leave so of course we could click on leave but here I'm going to click on cancel because the other thing we can do to close down the terminal is to type exit like that which will just take us straight out and then we'll close down the window here like that. So have we got LibreOffice installed? Hopefully we have and uh, look yes we've now got Linux apps on the system and if I click it there are all the components of LibreOffice. So I can launch LibreOffice Writer which will run up the virtual machine and run the software inside it if you see what I mean coming up very exciting that was uh, not too bad oh look it's a new install do we want tips on startup we never ever want tips on startup whoever wants tips on startup we don't want the release notes either we just want to run LibreOffice and of course I need to type hello like that and put it into very large letters because it is as I'm sure you know in these videos the law there we are hello so we've now successfully installed and run up LibreOffice Writer here in Chrome OS Flex. Right, shall we add to our software menagerie? I think we should. And we can either do this graphically, as I'll show you in a few minutes time. But for now, we'll stick with the terminal. So we'll get back into that. And if we go down here and click on Terminal, it still doesn't do what you probably expect. We don't go straight to a command line. Rather, we get to this screen where we can do things like changing terminal settings, very handy, font sizes, colors, things like that. And we also have up here an option for managing our virtual machine, which again I'll show you in a few minutes time. But to get straight back to the command line, what we need to do is to click on Penguin. I rather like that. And here we are back with our Linux terminal. Where to start with, I'm going to do a sudo apt install and a gimp to install the GNU image manipulation program. There we go. And alongside gimp, I also like to have a vector image package on the system. So I'll do a sudo apt install and a inkscape like that. And finally, I think no computer should be without solitaire. So I'll type And there we are, our computer is now loaded up with more software applications. And I think we should just check that they've actually been installed, check if they work. Let's go up to Linux apps. We've got a little dot there telling us we've got new bits of software and we have. Let's try out Inkscape. Should come up hopefully, launch the virtual machine and uh, there we are, that's Inkscape. That's rather good. And we've also got here uh, GIMP. Let's just run up GIMP, the GNU image manipulation program. Hopefully that'll work as well. Looks like it will. That's rather good as well. That's fantastic. And of course, we must try out Solitaire. That's absolutely critical. And just before we do, it's worth pointing out that all of the applications here, like every other application on this system, has got a right click menu. So, for example, if we go to Ailsdrop Solitaire and we go and right click on that, we can uninstall if we want, which will launch a Linux uninstaller, or we can pin it to the shelf. So, if I go pin to shelf like that, You'll see it's now pinned to the shelf down there. Always good to have quick access to Solitaire. And if we now run it up, there we are. We've got this fantastic Solitaire game on this system. And I don't think we need to view the uh, toolbar there, have all the space on the screen for Solitaire. And I think I'll even give myself more space by also hiding the shelf. Oh, that's marvelous. So I will now test this out, make sure everything's working absolutely perfectly. And I'll come back to you for a graphical install. Now, I said it was also possible to install Linux applications here in Chrome OS Flex graphically, and we can do this if we can download a dev file. And to show this, I've gone to this web page here, which is a web page for Vericrypt, a very useful encryption utility. I use it all the time. And if we go across to Downloads, we've got downloads here for Windows and for Mac, but also for Linux. 
and we can see the Debian packages here. Here is a GUI package, a GUI deb file for uh, software. So let's click on that and it'll download the file. There we are. That was rather fast, presumably not a very big file. And so we'll uh, show it in a folder like that. There it is. And if we go up to the file and right click, you can see we've got an option to install with Linux with a little penguin on the end just to make it exciting. So we'll click on install with Linux and there we are. And we just have to click on install or very nicely implemented. Installation process is going on down here. And there we are. It's finished. And as usual, I'll just uh, clean things up. We'll close that down and go into it, not by launching there. We'll go back to the menu. I'd also like to do that. There we are, new application waiting for us. And there is Veracrypt, which we can run up like that. Fantastic application. As I said, if you want to know how to use Veracrypt, you can, of course, look in the relevant Explaining Computers video. Now, because Linux applications run in their own isolated virtual machine, by default, they don't have access to all of the same file space and drives as the rest of the Chrome OS system. Rather, if we look down in the file manager, we see that Linux access is limited to its own separate folder, which is mapped to the Linux home directory. However, if we wish, we can share other folders. So, for example, if we want to make our photos accessible to the GIMP photo editor we installed earlier, we can right click and share with Linux. And guess what? We've now shared that folder with Linux. And we should check if it works. So we'll uh, run up the GIMP photo editor. There it is. And it's coming up lovely jubbly. And if we now go to File and to Open, we can see we have EC here, which is the standard Linux file space, currently nothing in it. But we can also click on File System. And if we then go down to Mount MMT to there, we go to Chrome OS and we go to My Files. There we are. We can see Photos. And if we want to get back to that easily in the future here in GIMP, we could just click on Plus and it'll appear down there in our Places list. Anyway, let's go into photos. Let's go into, for example, London Zoo. All that we've got a giraffe. Always good to have a giraffe. Let's open up a picture of a giraffe. And uh, there it is. Life's got to be good if you've got a picture of a giraffe. Anyway, let's get rid of a giraffe. It might be nice, but we'll say goodbye giraffe because I want to go back to show you the other virtual machine controls. And the quickest way to get there is via the terminal and go to a manage for the virtual machine like that and to just open up the Linux development environment. And here you can see we've got a control for managing shared folders. We can see one is shared already. We can get rid of that, that type of thing if we wanted to. We can do a similar thing for USB connected storage. Here on this computer right now, there's just one device. This is a micro SD card reader, I think, on this machine. We could share that with Linux if we wanted to. We've also here got the ability to back up and restore our Linux applications and files. That's rather handy. We've got a facility to adjust port forwarding to make Linux ports available to other devices on our network. And we've also got the ability to change the amount of drive space allocated to the Linux system. Although for now, I'll leave things as it is. And then finally, we can share our microphone if we wish. And if we really want to, we can remove the whole Linux development environment. And so there we are. That's hopefully a bit more useful information if you want to run Linux applications here in Chrome OS Flex. Four months ago, I installed Chrome OS Flex on the small Celeron PC connected to my television. This I use every day to watch YouTube, Disney Plus and other streaming content as well as web browsing, accessing Google Docs, and doing the final lean back checks on explaining computers videos. And over the past four months, Chrome OS Flex has performed very well indeed, and has become one of my favorite operating systems. In particular, it boots up very quickly. It's very straightforward to use. It's very stable. It's never crashed on me. And I really like how I can shut it down with a single click of the shutdown button. More broadly, the ability to install local Linux applications increases the potential for Chrome OS Flex to become a major competitor 
to Windows and Mac OS. Currently, it's not an operating system to run applications like high-end video editors or the latest games. However, for most end-user computing activities, in particular on older hardware, Chrome OS Flex is well worth considering. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.